I'm Dr. Salman Sitik from Scholar School System. I am the lecturer in business program. Today, we are going to discuss the difference between leadership and management. And we also be discussing the difference between managers and leaders. First, it will be better to define what the leadership is. Simply, we can define the leadership is the process of guiding or influencing others to accomplish some objectives. If the leadership is in an organizational context, we can define the leadership as the process of influencing organizational members to accomplish their organizational objectives. In another way, we can define the leadership as a behavior as a style, a skill, a process, a responsibility, an experience, a functional management, a positional authority, and influencing relationship, a characteristics and an ability. So, simply or sim <clears throat> simplest way is the an influence process. And also, by another definition, we could say that is the capacity for collective action to vitalize. And the leadership focus on two components, which are the process of influencing a group of individuals to obtain a common goal and develop a vision. While we are talking about leadership, we mostly <clears throat> emphasize the point of the vision. The leaders are the people who create a vision and they let the followers believe that vision. Indeed, the followers will be followers of the vision of the leader as well. What is the vision? In our previous lecture, we have defined the vision. Vision is the point in the future the individual or an organization wants to be. So, yes, leaders are the people who create a vision. And this vision is able to influence followers. What is management? Here, if you see the leadership, what is management? Management is a process of achieving organizational objectives by using organizational resources and through with people. In another definition, we can say that the management is to guide people or to direct people for accomplishing organizational objectives. And the management has some functions as you know them. What are those functions? The primary function of the management is the planning function. Planning as a process setting objectives of the organization. If the management process is implemented in a department, it's setting the objectives of the department as well. Not only setting the objectives, it also includes allocating the tasks, identifying the tasks to accomplish those objectives. And we also outline how to perform those tasks in an organizational context. Next, organizing is another function. It includes structuring organization with identifying the departments, positions, authority, responsibility, and also allocating the required staff it also separated and defined as the staffing function of organizing. And later on, we have directing function. At this point, there is intersection between the management and leadership. In directing function, mostly leadership, motivational skills, and also communication skills are required. So we could say that leadership is required for management. As a skill, we are talking about leadership at this point. But later on, once we are able to compare each other, we are going to define it in a broader scope, leadership. The final function of, and the last function of management is the controlling function. In controlling function, what do we do? In the beginning of the process, the management process, we set the standards. What is the standard? Acceptable level of the activities to 
accomplish task. If we had the standards, in the end of the each managerial process, we measure the actual performance and we compare it to standards. If the standards are met by the actual performance, the management has accomplished the process as it used to be. If there is a deviation between the standards and actual performance, the management is supposed to take some corrective actions. So this is exactly management. So let's come to the differences between leadership and management. In terms of thinking process, in terms of approach, leadership focuses on people, as it is a process of guiding and influencing people. But the management as a process focuses on the things in the processes. Management is a goal-oriented process. In terms of setting goals, Leadership articulates a vision. A leader has his or her own vision and creates a feature. This is feature-oriented objective and sees the forest, not only the trees. The manager leadership focuses on the tree, on the forest, excuse me. But the management focuses on the trees in front of you, in front of the organization. And it doesn't create the vision. It doesn't create the prior feature. Management improves the present. Management executes the plans. The plans are developed based on the vision, and the vision is created by the leaders. In terms of employee relations, leaders empower, encourage, motivate their people or their followers, while the management controls the staff monitors the staff. Employee, in terms of employee relations, leaders prefer to trust their employees and they have an effort to develop their followers as well. But from the management side, it focuses on directing and coordinating the people. Another criteria is operation. By the operation point of view, Leadership does the right things. Management side does the things right. This is the difference. And leadership creates the change. And the change idea comes from the leadership. Management manages the change. Does not create or does not report a change she change in it. In terms of governance, leadership uses influences, uses conflicts, acts decisively. But management, in terms of governance, uses authority, avoids conflicts, acts responsibly. Both, in terms of common point, we could say that both are your leadership or management accomplishes a goal mobilize resources and also they have they have an effort for the vision in your slides you are going to have a youtube video which exactly explains the difference between leadership and manager and differences between leaders and manager as well now as a summary of that video and in terms of general discussion, let's see the differences between leader and manager. And with respect to the definition of the leader, what could we say? A leader is a person who influences his subordinates to achieve a specific goal. It might be a departmental goal, it might be a unit goal, it might be a personal goal. A manager is a person who manages the organization and is responsible for planning, coordinating, organizing, directing, and controlling. All the management functions are held by the manager based on the authority manager has. In terms of approach, leaders set the direction. They show where 
should the people go. But the managers take the actions, develop plans to go and the, and the way has been directed by leader. Subordinate, the relationship between the leader and subordinate is follower and leader. The relationship between subordinate and manager is employees and manager. Whoever is going behind the leader are known as <clears throat> followers. Whoever is following the manager called as employee. In terms of style, leadership style, <clears throat> excuse me, in leadership or leaders are the transformational characteristics. They seek to motivate and inspire workers, choosing to influence rather than direct others. Instead of giving orders, they prefer to convince them. But the managers are transactional. And it depends on the self-motivated people who work well in a structured and directed environment. By the decision point of view, leaders are facilitating decisions. What, what's the meaning of the facilitating? They try to create an atmosphere. All the followers are involved in decision-making processes. And they try to convince, they try to sell their decisions if they are doing their decisions by themselves. On the other side, managers make the decisions. They have the authority of decision-making and they take advantage of that. And they do not prefer uh, to encourage their employees involvement in decision-making mechanism. Leaders focus on people, but the managers focus on procedures and the policies. And by the change point of view, leaders promote the change. They diagnose the organization in terms of changing it, and they take the actions. They promote the organization to do this. But managers, only implement the change, in some cases, they could react against the change. And leaders use conflict as an asset, but managers avoid conflict. And in terms of people, leaders align the people, but the managers organize the people. You are going to have a case in the end of this chapter. What is this? Let me try to explain the first and you are able to read it. Mr. Ramkrishna is associated with a government owned PCU for past 15 years. He was recently transferred from Kochi to Bahitinda as the new administrative officer. After joining, he found that Union was very strong, and the union leader, Mr. Prakash, was quite influential. Once he was busy in some important work, and Mr. Prakash barked in the cabin without permission. He took the seat without asking, pulled out a cigarette, and started smoking. Mr. Ramkishna was puzzled at first, as this kind of behavior was not expected. Mr. Prakash looked straight into his eyes and told him, Hope you have good time in Batinda. Having said this, he left the cabin. Mr. Ramkishnan told for a few minutes and then decided to first complete his ongoing work. After some time, he called his assistant and asked him to get all the personal records of Mr. Prakash. He carefully went through the files and made the notes out of it. As per the, per the record, Mr. Prakash had last month claimed LTC, leave travel concession, for himself, his wife, his mother, and his son. As per the government norms, employee can claim LTC only for the children who are minor in age, like on second year, 18 years or below. After reviewing his notes, he found that Mr. Prakash had withdrawn a sum of 5,000 rupees in the year 2005 for the purpose of his mother's cremation. 
Another interesting observation was, if the records were to be believed, his son was born in the year 1997. Birth certificate was attached to the site to the file. That means he was an adult now. So Mr. Rinkeshna verified the facts and asked his attendants to call Mr. Prakash to his office. On the arrival of Mr. Prakash, Mr. Rankishna handed over a piece of paper and then asked him to give in writing the answer to the following questions. A. How is your mother doing? B. What is the age of your son? Mr. Prakash was shocked and started perspiring in the otherwise cool chamber. Mr. Prakash had only six months of service left and he this act could have caused him the immediate termination of his services and withdrawal of post-retirement benefit. He quickly came and bowed into the feet of Mr. Ramkrishnan and begged to forgive him. Mr. Ramkrishnan thought for a while and asked Mr. Prakash to deposit the said amount in the welfare fund and withdraw the false claim. Thereafter, till the time Mr. Prakash was in service, he obeyed the orders of Mr. Ramkrishnan without a single question. Union also became much quieter and cooperative. Was Mr. Ramkrishnan a good manager or a good leader? The question. I'm adding one question more. None of them. Or is he none of them? Either he is not a good manager or not a good leader. So that's the issue. Here, yes, Mr. Prakash was a strong leader with his authority. On the other side, there is an experienced administrative officer, and he took the advantage of his experience and used some weaknesses of the leader. But here, maybe, the ethical problems can be raised. And if you recognize some, own, some of the inconvenient actions are taken by someone, you need to take it to court or you need to take it to, to the legal investigation. Using this kind of weaknesses as the weapon on the people, it could not be an ethical behavior. Yeah, in terms of power and authority, yeah, you can promote it and you can acknowledge it. Yeah, this is a good act for the leader to take the advantage of it. But is it ethical? This is the question. If there is a serious inconvenient actions, you need to take it seriously to the board or to the legal investigation. That's the thing. All right. Thanks for today. Have a good day.